In our last part of this clip, we'll be looking at communicating across differences on page 97. Here we look at um, the how can people successfully communicate with people from different cultures, the minority group adapting to the host culture, and both trying to adapt to language and the style of the other. And we do look at this late in our work when it comes to language and power in the following pages. But for now, we're looking at when people speak the same language, there can be differences in the communication style and language use. And in this situation, which style should dominate if you do speak more than one language? It probably depends, let's say here, in terms of the context. You should both try to adapt somewhat to the language and style of the other and creating together, which is called a third cultural style. When people try to adapt to each other, they tend to create a sort of a style, which is third culture kids. So by this, in terms of what we're saying here is, a third culture kid is a person who spends a significant part of his or her developmental years outside of the parent's culture, therefore learning a new culture and then becomes a sort of third culture kid by bringing the two cultures together. Um, in this way, there isn't really a sense of belonging to a single culture, but belong to many different cultures there. They tend to build relations within the culture, but also other cultures as well, therefore not having an ownership of a culture. Another way of thinking about this is um, to kind of like watch that video I've put in the lesson plan as well, which is that when people are traveling, let's just say that you were brought up in a Western culture where you taught time is money, careers, and all of that, but you also are learning a different culture where time is more flexible and you should respect your elders and you, you know, have all of these other sort of um, group responsibilities, responsibility for your family. In that case, you don't feel like, in a sense, you belong to either all cultures, but that you belong to all of them, that you are adapting into it, these, this third cultural style here. They also noted that when two people are putting um, in an intercultural interaction, is two people putting together an improvised performance. Or when we are in different intercultural contexts, you know, we don't really know exactly how to you know, act, and therefore they say we have an improvised performance with a ready-made conversation script. We try to adapt our performance there and improvise. So let's just say we go to a, a Japanese restaurant where you need to sit on the floor and use chopsticks. We might try to kind of curb our behavior even if we don't know what to do. We'll try to adapt. And then therefore we're trying to be really flexible to the situation and try to be respectful in that sense as well. Moving on to the next page, we have an example of this. Mary Catherine Batesman, a famous anthropologist, gives an example of intercultural improvisation when meeting her Armenian husband's extended family for the first time. She was uncertain about whom she should and should not kiss in greeting them. She assumed she should probably kiss the mother, the brother, and the sister. So she did. But should she kiss the sister's husband, the sister's brother-in-law? She wasn't sure. The safest way is to shake hands and observe what would be the norm. As there is no harm in asking, it is always a good thing to ask people what is expected of you. We improvise verbally in similar ways. For example, if we speak to someone whose mother tongue is not English, we might follow the person's lead and speak a little slower using less slang and so on there with the cultural rules. So it's saying when we are in a, a situation which is not our cultural comfort zone, we might try to act accordingly and try to, you know, improvise as we go along to be respectful. In the next video clip, we'll be looking at language and power and how language can affect on how we speak in terms of the social position we might occupy, and that those that hold different positions of power in society, um, how does language play a part there? How does being part of cultural group be affected there? And then we'll look at the co-cultural communication orientations as well. Please remember to write down notes on the section of your work to discuss further with your lecturer and to do, once again, any kind of use to learn and textbook activities that might come up here. Okay, thank you so much, and let's go into our list of figures.